Sorry, you're still watching the program this morning on ITV. It's now time for our first discussion. And this time around, we shall be looking at a very disturbing uh, issue. If, if you've been following the uh, news platforms of different uh, platforms of the news, you realize that at the weekend on Saturday, there was a building collapse in Lagos that claimed the life of uh, uh, one person. But you know, there are conflicting reports. Uh, some person said four, some said five, some said one. But the the, the, the the whole issue is that whether a life is lost or true, a life is a life, and people have to take precautions to ensure that we have a reduction in the numbers of uh, cases uh, involving collapsed buildings, not just in Lagos, it's scattered around the country everywhere. But good enough, uh, this morning we have somebody in the studio to uh, tell us more on what they are doing to reduce uh, this you might not really eradicate it, but you can reduce it to a very minimal uh, issues of building collapse in the country. This morning we shall be looking at the roles of professionals and other matter arising in the course of the discussion I have with me in the studio. Uh, he is the branch manager, uh, chairman of the Nigeria Institution of Inst Nigeria Institution of Structural Engineers. He is in the person of engineer Fadi Lawrence Olani. A very good morning to you, sir. Good morning, sir. Yeah, actually, he's here on uh, on behalf of his national president, who is unavoidably absent at, at a time like this. We actually uh, extended the invitation to him as the president of Nigerian Institution of uh, Structural Engineer, Engineer Pizza, Ibn Jesu, who was supposed to be here with us this morning. Uh, good enough, we have the Abuja branch chairman uh, with us this morning, Mr. Fadi. Now let's begin with the profession, uh, structural engineers. Who is a structural engineer? Yeah. A structural engineer is one who is certified, who has passed through the science and principle of structural engineering, tested and certified. So how do you certify them? Because uh, it's not just about going to the university or the polytechnics to go and read a structural engineering and you come out and uh, you said you've been certified. How do you certify them? Are there uh, special procedures, courses, or examinations for you to ensure that this person has been certified a structural engineer? Yes, there are professional exams. Um, that is part three exam. It's an open book uh, examinations, and this goes for seven hours, mm -hmm. and it's an open book. Uh, where you'll be tested uh, fully in both the science and principle, uh, concept, designing, detailings uh, of structures. It can be building, it can be bridges, it can be dam structures, etc. And uh, we have uh, a, a, a datum uh, that is uh, a, a, a that is a pass mark that you have to get before you can be certified to be a corporate member of a uh, uh, Nigerian uh, Institution of Structural Engineers. All right. And then you, sh you should have put in three to four years. Oh, three to four, four years. Four years postgraduate. All right. We, we know the building industry has quite a lot of professionals in it, both from the plumbing, the architecture, uh, architectural designers, and so many of them. Now, at what point does a structural engineer come in when you consider uh, erecting a, a structure, whether bridges, roads, or buildings? Yeah. Um, in, in the context of buildings, um, after the architect matter has been done with its architectural design, uh, this goes to the structural engineers and the service engineers like mechanical, electrical. Uh, at that point, we're able to check uh, maybe interferences and all the rest. Uh, he may want his pipe to go through a particular point, and uh, I may be having my major reinforcement there. All those things are interference that we are going to check and uh, resolve. All those are uh, conflicts. But when you talk in terms of uh, highways, as I've just said, when we are talking of uh, highways appurtenances like uh, bridges, uh, culverts, um, where it has nothing to do with architect. Um, uh, that is a bridges which the structural engineer has to go through. Uh, proper soil investigation in both, both building and uh, bridges. There's going to be proper soil investigations to determine the type of soil you are going to fund your foundation on. 
So who carries out this uh, uh, investigation and then how do you determine that uh, this soil or this very uh, surface you want to start a structure is uh, safe for you to have your building on it? Yes, we have uh, all these uh, divisions are under Nigerian Start of Engineers like uh, Nigerian Institution of Structural Engineers. We have another division, Nigerian Institution of uh, Geotechnical Engineers uh, who monitor that in terms of uh, soil uh, investigations. Um, there are things to look for. There are engineering properties uh, to look for um, in terms of uh, uh, determining the type of foundations you, go, you should go for. Uh, there are a lot of tests to be conducted. That's what we call SPT test, that's CPT test, SPT is standard penetration test, and CPT is cone penetration test. All these tests with the resistance of the soil as you hammer in, and at the same time, with SPT, you take samples that you can easily see and take to the laboratory at the same time to test and determine, for example, the bearing capacity uh, of, the, of the soil. We call it safe bearing capacity this time around because it's going to take care of settlements and at the same time of the ultimate combined. Uh, then, if it is a heavy structure going uh, skyscrapers where you'll be looking at uh, maybe pile foundations and it may not be a skyscraper if the soil is so poor uh, you can even have uh, just a story building on the pile foundations and there uh, uh, they to be determined in terms of frictions and in terms of end bearing and all the rest and uh, you co compare the load coming the load demand compared to uh, the type of uh, foundations you'll be putting there uh, and does wind has any factor to play when it comes to Erecting buildings, just like you mentioned, sky uh, 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 buildings, high rise buildings. Does the wind, positioning of the wind, does it have anything to do when you're erecting the building? Yes, it has. Um, skyscrapers, buildings, mm -hmm. there are wind pressures which are determined. And uh, if you move around and you see some big high scraper under constructions, apart from the lift shaft, where you're going to have a shear wall, what you call a shear wall is a purely reinforced concrete wall where the shift goes in. This helps to resist the wind, brace your columns and all the rest. At the same time, you have some shear walls, maybe at some corners that are going to determine, not just as shear, that uh, shear, not just for lift shaft. At the corners of the buildings, you will see some just full concrete wall going up. This helps to resist the wind and pressures. Now let's look at uh, our major points of our discussion here, building collapse, like I mentioned earlier, there was one in uh, Lagos State just at the weekend. We had several, several, several of them of recent between 2020 to present uh, 2022. We have several uh, building collapse. To you, as an expert, how you've gone through the reports from some of these demolition, uh, some of these uh, collapse building, what would you say are the reasons why we're having them in the increase, especially in Lagos State? Yes, from my personal perspective, uh, the collapse in Lagos, that of uh, Saturday, we read that uh, an existing building will to a family, uh, a bungalow, they are trying to take it to a two-story building, and uh, that at the second uh, floor, when this thing uh, came in, when the structure came in, yeah, there are things. Let me say this. For example, you are building in an occupied environment whereby you demolish your structures and you want to rebuild a new one. If you are not careful, that's where the input of the professional comes in. One may say, okay, go to 1.2 meter excavation for your foundation. That's about four feet for those who want to go into Imperia. Go to 1.2 meter, there are about, then you're on the safe ground. Meanwhile, you might have forgotten that the building they demolished has an oversized concrete, uh, a substructure that was bad filled before, but by the time it's not seen any block again, it goes from that artificial level downward to 1.2 meter. And at the same time, if you're not be able to determine and check, is the foundation I'm, I'm going to be done, is it firm? Maybe under normal circumstances, assuming it's a natural, a native uh, ground, it's just excavating maybe just 0.6 or 0.5, and it's not getting to a stronger uh, soil. 
I'm not saying an area where you have a rocky environment, we cannot go beyond that. Even that we have to anchor to afford the strip play and all the rest. But if a test is being conducted, as I've said earlier, like all these SPT, uh, standard penetration tests and all the rest, we're able to log and see the textures and determine at what depth you go to find this building. If you find it at the proper point and other superstructures are properly designed, you are, you, you'll be safe. Now, looking at the, like the example you just gave now, a building was a bungalow and somebody decided to make it a, a story building. Now, do you have to get maybe an approval or a special test to see whether that building has the capacity to sustain that extension? Was that carried out before that building that actually collapsed on Saturday? Do you think that was actually carried out or the person just decide I can increase because it's my building? Do you have the right to just, because it's your building, you want to extend it without proper check? Definitely. There are statutory um, procedure you need to follow before erecting the building. You have uh, development control, developmental controls agency all over the state, even Abuja. You have your FCT developmental control department that uh, even after your design, you need to submit your drawings for approvals. And uh, during the course of constructions, the government monitors. But you discover, I was, when I was reading that of a Galadima uh, area building that collapsed in uh, 2020, I discovered it was marked for stop work, but uh, the owner and the contractor took advantage of weekend or probably uh, public holiday, and they continue. So most of the time you discover they observe these things. They gave uh, the mark on the walls, but one way or the other, they circumvent. But for example, that of uh, Lagos, that of Saturday, which we are saying, uh, which they said that uh, it was a bungalow and they are trying to erect a two-story uh, building. You can't say you are strengthening your bungalow to take a story or two-story building. Mm -hmm. Because you, you, even if you have any column at the corners or whatever uh, joints, it's not, it may not be designing. Uh, designed for uh, structural capacity, we just to brace the block walls, the partitions, and the uh, all the rest. So that has to have a new foundations uh, at issue. Does the building has uh, um, like do you test the weight of a building to determine the kind of building it's going to be? For instance, if you're building a warehouse and probably you have a story building. Suddenly, downstairs was just uh, maybe a store, and then you now decide to make an apartment on top of that building. Do you determine the weight of the building? Does it affect or does it contribute to building collapse? And then, secondly, do buildings have uh, like a lifespan? Does the building have a lifespan or any structure for it to just cave in at any time? Is there an expiring time for buildings, or, or what we just see is the inability of people to do the right thing? Um, yeah. You can have a story building and you want to go to three story buildings. There's no crime in that. That's what we call retrofitting and strengthening of existing buildings. You can underpin, you can strengthen your foundations, you can strengthen your columns, you can strengthen your beams. There are jacketing of your columns, of your beams, there are different methods. You can have additional uh, concrete and uh, with, with reinforcement around the column. There are different methods. You have uh, you have other methods like uh, FRP, that is fiber reinforced polymer, uh, which you don't need to. That's very fast, and you don't need to uh, in case a, a building that people are already occupying. You don't need to take a long time to do that with FRP. And uh, what you do is that uh, you load the structures, a predetermined load. Going by standard, there are predetermined loads. You will load the existing structures with a die gauge and all the rest. Transducer is going to uh, uh, process that to tell you what is the weight that structures can take. Then what additional, what is the demand load? I'm expecting additional. Then what strengthening am I going to provide in terms of the robustness and strength? All these things are there. There are way of loading. 
For example, if I want to know the weight of this, uh, I want to know what load uh, this we carry. I have the, I have the designed, uh, uh, whatever the factory's uh, certificate that will tell you the strength of this, and this is what it can carry. If I want to test and see what it can carry, if I want to confirm that by standard, it will tell me maybe I should go for two thirds of the designed, uh, maybe strength it can withstand which I have when I was buying, by the time I start loading that, it will be reading. That's a gauge you put. You start trading. It will be telling you the strength. At that value, you're able to know, okay, this is the, at a point it's failing, you will know, okay, at this point it's failing. And then the demand load, additional load I'm putting is so, so much. Okay, then you put it into design and say, okay, list your column now, maybe if, uh, 50 cm by 50 cm is going for one meter by one meter based on the demand or expected load, additional load. Mm -hmm. All these things are possible. You strengthen it. Even the neck. Some people may uh, want to overlook the joint between your columns and your beams. That way you have to strengthen those joints too. Column joints, uh, beam and column joint must be strengthened. Apart from strengthening the column and the beam itself. So all these things has a process engineering the principles mm -hmm. that you follow and you, you, your mind will be at rest. So what about the uh, lifespan of uh, structures? How do you determine that? Because I know some businesses will tell you a building can stand as far as uh, 100 years. Uh, do you determine the lifespan of a building or a structure? Well, uh, lifespan depends on the routine, maintenance, mm -hmm. regular monitoring, let us look at it from uh, a simple, uh, let me use this for analogy. Mm. We have some buildings that are pre-colonial. How many years can we put into that? They are still standing. Yeah. More than a century. So that can tell you that building can last a very long time. And it's a matter of strengthening maintenance if you want to use it. Uh, for a further demand uh, load. All right, let's look at uh, availability of professionals in this case because some of the reasons why we see uh, structures having these kind of problems, caving in and all that, is the inability of people to uh, get the service of professionals. Some places have said uh, getting professionals are so expensive. For instance, you are an institution coming to your organization or your institution to pick an expert that will give you value for what you want to do might be too expensive and some persons will decide to go for quacks now how have you been able to manage this having the uh, quacks take over your businesses and then b putting us in this uh, crisis where we are now yes i i will ask have people take have they taken time to compare the price of a quack and a professional it's a cheap black male that a professional will be expensive when you engage them. You can always discuss that. You can call me now and say, ah, Friday you come, I want to have my, I want to build my building. I can even do it free of charge for you based on our relationship. Mm. I can put all my effort, my resources, at least to make sure you have the best. Because our joy is to see your structure standing first. Ask them, those who are saying that, who have you called? And they say no. Who have you contacted? But it's a cheap black maid, they will say, oh, that's the easiest way to say. Uh, it's professional, it's expensive, this and that. It's just like saying maybe a patent uh, uh, store and a pharmaceutical store and all the rest. So I'm looking at it. I go to pharmaceutical. Sometimes you go to H Medis, I'm not advertising. Now you discover you are getting it even cheaper. And some of other pharmaceutical stores. You discover you find it cheaper. I've been taking time to compare. But what is the ultimate result? Mm -hmm. When you have your building, put all your resources, it gets collapsed, life lost, which you don't have any excuse for. You don't have any excuse for having a poor structures, killing human beings. So how have you been able to manage a uh, quackery in your profession? Well, we are saying quackery to my own perspective. All cadres are needed. For example, current Council for Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, we uh, discovered that uh, we have cadres. You have engineers, you have engineering technologies, 
you have technicians, you have craftsmen, all this right is a body, mm. it's a system mm. that you have to work uh, together. We are talking of park, then you are saying uh, a lawyer taking up the job of a structural engineer. Now, for instance, we have some persons that will tell you the person is a builder, is a plumber, is an electrician, all in one. Can you get the best from such a person? The white people who are not registered uh, structural engineers take up jobs that are supposed to be well uh, supervised by specialists. These are the people we call quacks. Now, they are scattered everywhere. For instance, if you drive through the street of Abuja, there are some places you get to. So some persons are always sitting down under the tree, and when you just park your car, they come with building materials, and they tell you they can erect your building for you in two months, in one week, and uh, sometimes you see it's a cheap label, and you want to catch in on that. Those are the kind of persons we're talking about. How have you been able to manage such situations to ensure that we don't allow them take over the business of building in as much as you just uh, said it is not expensive for you to get an expert if you want to but we still have a very high numbers of quacks uh, coming into this uh, business um, yes um, I think uh, two years ago the the constitutions and the memo out of Korean has been refused. Mm. And it has empowered them to manage this. Okay. How? Before now, if there's a building collapse, Korean, representing the government in regulating engineering practice in the country, has no power to arrest and prosecute the owner of the building and the park. That person must be a registered engineers. So a lot of people get away with this. But of recent, they have been empowered to arrest the clients, I mean the owner, the developer, and even the quack that are found wanting in this area and prosecuted. But have there been any instances, cases of prosecution? For instance, the building collapse in Lagos last year that claimed even the life of the owner of that very uh, skyscraper building in Lagos. Have there been, we've saw the white paper already, have there been any prosecution that you know about? That somebody, will, when somebody listening to you, you know that we hear yes, you, your organization and other uh, sister bodies are doing uh, a very uh, interesting job there to ensure that people's confidence are built in terms of uh, employing specialists in doing this. Have you heard of cases, are there cases of pr prosecution so far? Yes, of I building? think uh, judgment does not come quickly in that form. As a lot of legal the lawyer knows that better. Yeah, a lot of investigations have been carried out. Even the transition of structural engineers was part of it. Other divisions of our engineers are part of the committee set up by the government to look into, into this. And before judgment is passed, a lot of things needs to be checked. Not only in Nigeria, it's not peculiar to Nigeria. Even 2018, the FI Federal, I mean, F uh, Florida International University's pedestrian bridge that collapsed under constructions across the road that killed many people. Uh, the investigation has been carried out. Up to now, I don't think I've read that's a judgment being passed because there are other things that need to be looked at. Otherwise, you will see appeal here and there and all the rest will not get to the end of the uh results but what i will say is better is better precaution is better than cure mm -hmm. uh property owners we should have spirit of excellence we need to be disciplined discipline our mind let's get the right hand let's do the right thing why circumventing why not getting the proper hand if i know you are a quack if you want to treat yourself you should know the type of place you go for your head, I cannot just say, okay, I can see one room there, they say it's a clinic, let me take my child or let me take myself to that place or my wife to that place. You will not just go. Let us have a disciplined mind and uh, let's have spirit of excellence in whatever we are doing. That matters a lot. Instead of us, uh, let's plug the, 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 the source of, uh, uh, of, of, uh, of that corruption 
instead of tackling uh, uh, the, the corruption effect itself. We shouldn't allow it to happen. Now, you, you talked about uh, the last building. Let's come to your uh, constituency. You are the branch chairman of uh, Abuja, uh, branch of the Nigerian Institution of Structural Engineers. The last time we heard of a building collapse, like you mentioned, uh, is in 2020. What are you doing differently in Abuja that is not being uh, achievable in Lagos states that we're having this issue? Is it that we don't have, uh, like you mentioned, old structures where people try to refurbish or try to rebuild again in Lagos. We don't have such cases in Abuja. What have we been doing differently in Abuja to ensure that we don't have uh, we have a very uh, reduced numbers of uh, building colors here? Yes, I think uh, we should all know this. All these institutions like Nigerian Institution of Structural Engineers, we are not chartered. We are not government. We can only blow whistles. Advocacy. We can't go into any person's properties under construction or whatever and make a comment. We don't have that legal right, statutory right to do that. We can only play whistle and we blow whistle and it's not hard. There's nothing you can do to it. So we have all these limitations mm -hmm. as an institution. Not that uh, Nigerian Institution of Structural Engineers, yes. You must see to what is going on there. They will just call me and say, ah, if something is going on there and you go there, you can't because you are not empowered to do that by law. We are just a society that are not being empowered. So this question is good for the government to answer. Well, if you are giving your assessment, if you are to give your assessment of the kind of buildings you see in the federal capital territory, are you saying that they can resist most of these pressures that we see uh, resorting to building collapse. You have said it all. Mm. So if you are giving that assessment, that Mr. Power has been delegated to you by the government agency, or status or department to do that, then you are empowered. For example, this Akwagwa bridge that collapsed and uh, that should be March or April? Yes. Akwagwa that got burnt, not got collapsed. Burnt, yes. Sorry, right mm. there. Where some persons were living under the bridge. Yeah, yes. Uh, we put our request to the current president, Engineer A. Rabiu, FNSC, uh, uh, to investigate, to carry out some uh, investigations to see how fit it is to use after the fire incident and all the rest. We quickly went there. He gave us the approval to go and gave us all the required uh, uh, strength to do that. Start to trailing. We were there. And uh, uh, we have submitted our report, uh, preliminary report to that effect. Mm -hmm. So if we are given that uh, authority is being devolved, uh, then it, it, we, 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 we have that uh, every right to do the right thing. Yeah, let's look at other, there's other uh, aspects of building collapse or let's say factors that uh, we want us to look at. It's raining p uh, season now and we're having a lot of uh, flooding. Uh, very soon we'll be recording floods most every part of the country. Does this have a factor to play when it comes to, is it a factor? when it comes to building collapse? Yeah, it is. That is so how does flooding affect uh, a building? Yeah, that's flood and erosion mm. issues. By the time your foundation is not protected and doing the, you have a runoff uh, as aftermath of a rainfall, your foundation can get eroded and floating. Basically, just expecting collapse. So what should people be doing at this time? So at this time, one, Try not to build at floodplain in the first instance. And if you are doing that, you must provide something like a dike or a pond around your building. Mm -hmm. If you go to the olden days, you always see some pavements around the buildings. In the olden days, you see those things. Those are a pond around the building to protect the foundation. We know they cannot take their foundation deep, but they do some things around it so that as a buffer, that you cannot easily, runoff cannot, erosion cannot easily erode the underneath of the foundations. All right, as we wrap up this uh, very discussion, what's your advice, your general advice to Nigerians in what, anytime you intend to erect a building, what do you think should be the first step for them to take as your wrap up uh, advice for this program? 
this very segment? Yes, um, it's not new. Get the right uh, team, professionals in your building. And again, don't allow a factual design for your structures. Mm -hmm. If I have a challenging soil, I cannot just give someone to design for me and send me a drawing through your email and then you start printing and building. Let him visit there. Apart from this, report is getting. Yes, you can do that at a uh, uh, concept planning stage, schematic, but when it gets to final design, final drawing, construction drawings, that person needs to fix it if you are, if it's, if you are constructing uh, in a challenging environment on the soil. Please, it's always good. But do you think building materials also contribute to this? I just uh, remember this now. Because we have cases where some uh, persons will tell you, I'll go and get the materials myself, probably because you wouldn't want your... Uh, engineer or your builder to cheat you, you go and get inferior materials to come and erect building. Do we have uh, cases like that? Do you think building materials also contribute to cases of uh, building collapse here? Yeah, whoever is buying the materials, being a professional, being the client, whoever, it must be subjected to test. Mm. For example, the concrete you are going to use for your building will be tested based on the mix ratios. There are mm. trial mix before you start using that concrete. But if I'm using one tool for one portion of cement, one portion of sand, one portion of uh, chippings, quasi uh, aggregates, and putting all them together, uh, then there are what we call uh, compressive strength that you go and crush this to see the strength of what you are going to use. If the cement is not giving you what's supposed to give you, there are a lot of tests to conduct on cement tool to see how good uh, it is. If it has stayed a long time and all the rest that lose some strength, you will know all this. So whoever is buying, not we, uh, you don't have, you are not a spirit to see and say this, that. That's to be tested. All right. Thank you so much for your time. The acting chairman, Abuja branch of the Nigerian uh, Institution of Structural Engineer is Engineer Fadi Lores Olani. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, we'll take a quick break here. And when we return, the program this morning on ITV continues.